Chris the Bergeron Zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So, for example, if you had $3,000 a month in income and you were paying $4,000 per month at assisted living, your income for VA purposes is negative $1,000. I always use the same example because when I first started doing this in 2005, I gave a speech. And the next day, somebody called me and he said, um, hey, surveys, called me by my last name. Hey, surveys, I was at your speech yesterday. And I just called the VA, and I want to know what kind of game you're playing, because they told me my dad had too much income, and he was never going to qualify for the VA benefit. And I said, well, what did you say to the VA? And he said, well, funny enough, he's your example. And I said, well, why don't you humor me and just tell me what you said to the VA? He goes, I told them what you said. They said, how much does he have an in income? I said, $3,000 a month, $36,000 a year. And they said, he has too much income, he's never going to qualify. And then I didn't say anything, because that's me. And he said, hey, anybody there? Are you still there? I said, yes. I'm waiting for the part where you told him he was paying $4,000 a month for assisted living. So his income's negative $1,000 a month, negative $12,000 a year. And he said, I didn't say that. I got to go. And he hung up on me. OK? So the most important thing is to remember, when someone from the VA says, what's your income, it's math. All right? And you have to remember to minus out your regularly occurring unreimbursed medical expenses, which in addition to assisted living is going to include your home care fees, if you have any, your uh, medical insurance premiums, your uh, Medicare premiums, anything that's regularly occurring and unreimbursed. So you can see how a lot of people end up thinking they don't qualify for this benefit. Right? I can't tell you how many times somebody will say to me, Remember when I said the um, maximum amount for a surviving spouse that she can have an income each month, $1,113. Oh, I talked to a friend of mine. She told me I can't have more than $1,113 a month in income, and my Social Security is $1,800, so I don't qualify. You're living in an assisted living that costs you $3,600. You absolutely qualify. Your friend just costs you about $13,000 a year. I never tell people that. Because, you know, who wants to lose a friend? But that's what I mean by you're going to, you know a lot now when you're leaving, but please don't tell people they don't qualify, right? Because you, you don't want to cost anybody any money. So now what if it's, if it's flipped a little bit? So if, you, oh, if you're zero or negative, you're looking at full benefit on the income side. We still have to pass that pesky asset test. But what if you're positive? There are a lot of people out there that'll tell you, oh, you can't be positive. You have to be negative. Not true. You can be positive. So let's flip it. Um, we got to get rid of that, because I can't do that math. I like to flip it, which is, let's say your income is $4,000 a month, and you pay $3,000 a month to the assisted living. So you're positive $1,000. Well, what happens then is if your surviving spouse, approximately, the VA would say, okay, 1,113 is the maximum surviving spouse benefit. You have $1,000 left over. How about we give you $113? And that's how that works, okay? If you were a single veteran, that would be um, 1732 minus 1,000, 732 a month. And our married veterans, 2,054 minus 1,000, 1,054. Pretty good. I've had people go, $113 a month, that's not worth filing for. I have filled out a lot of paperwork in my lifetime. Nobody gives me $113 a month for something I filled out years ago. I think it's worth it. But even better than that, you've done the heavy lifting. You only have to fill out the big application once in your lifetime. And so if you fill it out and you start getting your $113 a month, and then you decide to move to assisted living, or your care level goes up, or whatever, then you're at the position of saying to the VA, hey, my costs have gone up, and they increase your benefit. In addition, if you're not receiving the full benefit, at the end of the year, remember when we were calculating it, the only thing we were allowed to look at was regularly occurring unreimbursed medical expenses. At the end of the year, if we're not receiving the full benefit, we can say to the VA, I had some non-regularly occurring benefits. I bought some eyeglasses. They were $300. They'd say, oh, well, 
for in our surviving spouse benefit, we left $12,000 on the table. You spent $300 on your eyeglasses, here you go. Spent $3,000 on your um, hearing aids, here's $3,000. All your prescription co-pays, your doctor co-pays, you can submit them. So getting in the game is very important. If you're not going to get the full benefit, still get what you can, and at the end of the year, um, submit for additional expenses, and if your care costs go up, submit for those. All right, so the asset test is determined by each individual situation. Okay, it's your age, it's your illness, it's your income test. Um, the largest amount of assets that we've ever had somebody have in their own name and get the benefit is $248,000, all right? And, um, but that's a rarity. That's somebody who had a really big negative and not a life-threatening illness so that their life expectancy was very long, okay? What we mostly see are that people can have between like 120 and 150. That's a very popular amount. And, the, and um, if you have 80,000 or less, we're definitely going to be able to get it for you if you pass the income test and all the other criteria. Does your house Good. You know, see, he threw me off my game. Thank you, Arthur. So what is an asset? That's how I usually start that page. Your assets are cash, stocks, bonds, securities, those oil, well royalt uh, oil wells that are producing those royalties, a second home if you own one, but not your primary residence. Okay, so that's really important. Lots of times folks will say, you know what? I am getting lonely here. I do think it would be nice to have someone else cook for me. I do want to move to Heritage, but what if I don't like it? I'm not ready to sell my home, etc. The VA doesn't force you to sell your home. You can keep your home and get your VA benefit, and then if a few years down the road you decide to sell your home and you haven't put it into a trust or something like that so that that sale counts as your asset, at that time you would notify the VA and you would, le and you would leave the VA benefit until your assets were back in line. Okay, so we do have clients who get the VA benefit, stop getting the VA benefit, get the VA benefit again. All right. Um, so like I've said before, well kind of said before, this is not a yes or no benefit. It's if and when. And the important thing to remember is if you're a veteran or surviving spouse of a veteran, you need to know about this so that you don't miss out when um, it is time for you to file. So common myths, there are a lot of folks out there that will tell you you can't have more than $80,000. They might even say something ridiculous like you can only have $30,000 or $10,000. That's because they're trying to relieve you of your oh-so-burdensome assets by getting you to buy an annuity. Don't fall for it. Um, that when a veteran or spouse is in a nursing home on Medicaid, the non-Medicaid spouse can still get the full VA benefit. A lot of nursing home staff will tell you if your spouse is in the nursing home, oh, don't bother to file, it's only $90 a month. That's not true, okay? The reason they think that is if you're a single person on Medicaid, it's $90 a month. And you're in the nursing home, and you're in the nursing home on Medicaid, it's $90 a month, okay? But if you're married, your wife can still have the full 2,054, all right? And if you're private paying, and you're single, okay? You're not at that Medicaid limit, and you're a single veteran. You can still get 1732, and you're, or your surviving spouse. You can still get 1113. And in Massachusetts, there's a portion of that, about $690 a month for our veteran, and about $419, $17 for our surviving spouse that can never be counted by Medicaid not for income purposes and not for the $2,000 a month limit. So it is extremely important for folks going into nursing homes to not be waylaid with false information on this benefit. And that a veteran living at home whose wife is in assisted living can still qualify for 1360 even though he's fine driving to see her at the assisted living every day. He might be told, oh, this is a veteran's benefit and you're fine so there's nothing for you. No, if his wife is needing care, there's still the potential for 1360 All right, those are just some common myths that you now know better than the next guy, aren't true, thanks to, uh, thanks to ERBC. So, and, and by the way, could you do, 
because we have time, could you, in addition, do two minutes on this benefit as it applies, even when you're at home? Just because this is an important piece. So the reason that a lot of people think of this as an assisted living benefit instead of as a home care benefit is because you still have to pass that financial test when you're at home. But instead of being able to deduct your, uh, in assisted living, you get to deduct the entire fee, right? And what does that entire fee include? It includes um, your food, your taxes, your utilities, all those things that when you're at home and you're paying, those aren't considered regularly occurring medical expenses by the VA. So you can't deduct um, your rent or your mortgage or your taxes or your food or your lawn care, any of those things. But you can deduct your home care expense, right? And they're not as stringent about needing assistance with two activities of daily living. All right, you need to really have, need the assistance with one activity of daily living for home care. They're basically saying, well, with one activity, you can deduct for the care that you're giving, but in order for us to really consider that assisted living a medical expense, we want you to have two, because it's a higher expense. They just want a little higher level of um, medical need. So for home care, um, we often see folks who, you know, they, they want to live at home and either they have low income and when you minus out what they're paying for home care or even sometimes when you're, before you minus out what you're paying for home care, you're below the limit. So I had a veteran, uh, the veteran services officer called me. He was living in um, senior housing and his income was only $1,200 a month and he was having Meals on Wheels deliver his meals. I said, well, geez, right off the bat, 1732 minus $1,200, he's missing out on $532 every single month without even deducting a medical expense. So we got him that right away. And, um, but let's say you're living at home. Your income might be $2,200 a month. Well, after you minus out your Medicare, your um, medical insurance supplement, what you're paying for a home care agency, or member that non-person daughter or daughter-in-law that's helping you out, pay her, okay? The VA is very um, kind to family home, giver, home care givers. So we minus that out, we get the benefit when we're at home. I just wanted to have a sense of that because this benefit, while I, while I was trying to apply it specifically to assisted living, because it really is a lot of times what makes the decision possible to do, to do assisted living, you should be aware that it's also available for you when you're at home. Any questions from our, my two wonderful guests here?